Welcome to the Prepped and Polished Podcast, the podcast that empowers you to take control of your education. Featuring weekly interviews with influencers in the world of education, as well as tutoring tips, lessons, and updates. And now, here's your host, Alexis Avila. Welcome back to the Prepped and Polished Podcast. Be sure to join our community. You can find us on all the social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, YouTube. Just type Prepped and Polished. Go to our site, preppedandpolished.com. Sign up for our monthly newsletter. And if you have a question during the podcast or after, submit a question to radio at preppedandpolished.com. I'll get back to you ASAP. Let's get to today's guest. Today's guest is Tammy Walsh. She's president of San Diego-based teen and parent empowerment company, Teen Wisdom, Inc. That's www.teenwisdom.com. Tammy is the first life coach for teen girls in the USA and has personally impacted the lives of over 10,000 teenage girls. Tammy is committed to impacting 2 million teen girls by training 1,000 women worldwide with her cutting edge life coaching program and her next certification program will begin in August, this August 2015. A recognized expert in the teen community, Tammy has appeared on local, national radio and TV shows, Fox News, for example. She's she's the featured expert on the Mary Kate and Ashley Olson.com website. Tammy has spoken to over 20,000 teens nationwide, author of top-selling uh, Did Well's Journal for teen girls in a popular audio, uh, audio series for parents, Communication, Turning Battles into Bridges with Your Teen. She, she, she can be seen on the feature film The Compass with other world-renowned speakers and authors, including Joy, Joe Vitale and Brian Tracy. Tammy is a graduate of UCLA, received her master's from Loyola Marymount University. And if you want to learn more about Tammy's certified teen wisdom life coaching training and other programs to empower teen girls, go to teenwisdom.com. On today's episode, Tammy talks about what teenage girls today struggle with and how effective mentoring can empower teenage girls to thrive into young adulthood. She also gives you parents a special message on how to best deal with your teenage girl. Get ready. This is enlightening stuff. Tammy, thanks for coming on the Prepped and Polished podcast. Appreciate your time. How are you today? I'm awesome. I'm great. I'm psyched. I'm great to be here and and support you and your mission and vision. Can you share with us a bit about your background, um, perhaps focusing on a few pivotal moments that brings you with us today as the first life coach for girls in the country? Absolutely. So I was a counselor in the inner city school district uh, in Los Angeles and was working with kids that were pre-gang or gang members already, primarily girls and boys too, but I was focusing a lot on girls in the inner city. And, you know, it was just an incredible time in my life as a counselor, really attempting to bring girls into a place of empowerment. However, there were some pivotal moments that really showed me how important it was to try to get to girls before they got into the depths of the gang involvement. And what I realized was there was a gap missing in the market. There were school counselors, there were therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, but there weren't really just a real solid group of people doing what I would call kind of the proactive work with a real sense of direction for these girls. So I ended up having a young lady, unfortunately, referred to my office when I was a school counselor who was only seven years old because I was working with a kindergarten through eighth grade population of kids. And she was basically balled up in a corner of the classroom and wouldn't speak and was crying and the teacher couldn't get her out of the little classroom and called me down and I was able to get this little girl out of the corner of the classroom, get her down to my office where she proceeded to just basically share with me the molestation that she had gone through and how brutal it was. And it was a pivotal moment for me where I had to file all these papers to report her to Child Protective Services and get her out of the home she was in because of course it was It was a relative who was molesting her sexually. And it was a moment where I just, I remember my heart sunk and I said, 
how am I going to be able to get to more kids before they ever get into these terrible, horrible, tragic situations? And so the idea came to me um, to do proactive work, which would be getting into schools, getting into homes, and educating and empowering girls primarily with life skills, um, decision-making skills to help protect them and prevent them from, A, being victimized, and B, creating a life that they could be proud of and inspired by and, you know, have personal power. So that was the beginning of life coaching because not every single girl out there um, going through the tunnel of adolescence really needs a therapist, but they all need help and support around these life skills that they're not able to get in the school setting, unfortunately. So that was a pivotal moment in my career, and I ended up resigning from my job, which was tough to do because I love the families I was working with and the kids, but I realized there was no way I was going to be able to fulfill my life purpose and my mission if I was just in a place of comforting, consoling, and putting out fires. It was really going to be important to me, not that that work wasn't gratifying, but to find a way to, you know, get ahead of some of the issues and the problems before they became as tragic as that situation was. Wow, that's amazing. And Teen Wisdom came about. So tell us about Teen Wisdom um, and what what it provides. And uh, do you work with families, teens online all over the world and country? Yeah, great great question. So Teen Wisdom came about after I left the school district job. I um, actually burned out. So if people are in transition, if you're going through your life and you're a teenager who's exhausted and like, how am I going to reboot and do my next chapter of life? That's kind of where I was. And I left my school district job and I had this idea to do life coaching for teenage girls. And I didn't even have a name for it. I basically just had the idea. And I had had a degree in counseling, so I knew how to work with girls, you know, build rapport and connect with them. But the idea of Teen Wisdom came about because I actually heard some different speakers, and one of them was a life coach. This was back in 1999. And I really resonated with the idea that life coaching is not about being stuck in your past. It's about looking into your future and seeing what might be in the way of getting where you want to get, and how do you get there? What are the strategies, and what's the direction? And a coach really helps you get there. And I thought, well, that's exactly what I want to do for teens. So the idea of Teen Wisdom, the name just was organic. It came to me through um, working with a few friends. We were brainstorming on what the name of my business would be. And I said to them, I think teenagers have a ton of wisdom. I think they're some of the smartest people on the planet. I think adults could learn a ton from teenagers about living in the moment and being joyful and dealing with people that are difficult. And so the idea of Teen Wisdom came to be. And it started as a one-on-one life coaching practice in the Los Angeles area where I would literally drive to girls' houses and sit with them in their family room or their living room, their dining room, bedroom, and talk with them about their goals and their challenges and help create a a plan or a trajectory to help them achieve balance in their life or better grades or better communication with parents or um, learning how to get through a breakup or creating their, their college and future plans. So it was really cool work. It was very fun. It was very forward motion oriented. And um, moms and teenage girls were just really grateful that I was there because they were fighting a lot. There were a lot of mother-daughter battles going on in those years and still are with communication. And so I was able to do a lot of mother-daughter work one-on-one. And then it just kind of grew from there. It grew from being a private practice to group work schools would bring me in to do programs for life skills for teenage girls. And then after about six, seven, eight years of that work, um, we opened another um, office in the San Diego area where we had life coaching for teenage girls in the San Diego area. And then from there, it's grown into, which would all be live service, like direct service, one-on-one or one-to-many live. And then the web, yeah, the web is just amazing. Because in the last five years, the vision has been to make sure that my goal is to have so many teenagers, girls have access to life coaches. So what we've been doing is training women to use the curriculum that I've developed over the last 10 plus years. And we do our trainings for women who say, I want to help teenage girls have a great life and deal with the challenges that they have um, before they get you know, terribly difficult. And so I want to do life coaching. And so because of the web, we can train virtually 
um, and we have online programs and phone and webinar. And so it's just amazing. We have Teen Wisdom graduates now in South Africa, Canada, the UK. Um, we have a training coming up in August. That will be about a four-month program. We have women signed up in Hong Kong and Paris. So it's just a really cool time where women are saying, I don't want teenage girls to go through life without support, and life coaching is something I'm called to. So it's just amazing that it's just grown and grown and grown over the last 15 years. It's incredible. When you started working with teens in the 90s, was it the 90s? No, I started. I started really teen wisdom. I put a kind of a fork in the in the road, um, and I left the school district in late '99. And I birthed okay. teen wisdom in January of 2000. So I would say two, 15 years ago, because it's June now, it's 2015. So 15 and a half years ago, I had an idea. I had a little bit of money in the bank, and I had not one prospect for a client because I was working, you know, 20, correctly, 15 to 20 hours a day. It felt like in the inner city working with gang kids. So it was just this idea. And, and so I, I got started about 15 years ago. Yeah. So what I was wondering, like what types of struggles do teenage girls face today versus, you know, the 10, 10, 20, 20 years ago, is, are they the same types of problems? Well, that's another great question. And I, I mean, I think you're, you have so many teens that love and follow what you do, and you've built such an incredible, you know, portal to help teens through the stress of test prep and all the pressures they feel. And so what we're seeing in our world in Teen Wisdom World with our coaches that are coaching, and I still have a small private practice with girls that I see, um, it's just all of that. It's pressure on steroids. It's academic pressure, pressure to you know, look good, pressure to perform, achieve. I think what we're seeing now is really this intense pressure to be perfect and intense pressure to achieve and intense pressure for girls to conform to the standards of beauty that are very narrow um, and, you know, remember to be sweet and kind and compassionate and loving. And it's like we're asking girls to be super women. And so the pressure... I call it identity, the pressure cooker. The pressure cooker problems on girls um, are manifesting, you know, as you know, because you've interviewed other experts. And, you know, we have more girls with depression, with eating disorders, with ADHD, with self-mutilation issues, cutting, self-harm, self-injury. So I, I've got to say that in the last six or seven years, I started doing trainings about six years ago for women to work with girls. The reason I decided to leverage and scale it is because I saw the need and my phone was ringing off the hook and I was like I can't work with all these girls these parents are calling me to see I've got to have more foot soldiers out there and so the issues I think are more intense and though I think that some of the um, the developmental milestones that girls are going through to become independent to create an identity to individuate from their families like those are universal. I think we, we, you and I, I don't know how old you are, but you know, we had to become independent. We had to individuate from our families. We had to develop an identity. All of those are what I would call universal developmental issues affecting teenagers um, as they grow through adolescence to adulthood. But what I'm seeing now is I'm seeing girls that are 10, 11 years old with anxiety issues where I have to move my coffee table to the side of my office and I'm laying down on the floor next to an 11 year old fifth grader sixth grade girl teaching her how to do deep belly breath work to help her calm down and she's 11 years old because she's stressed about her body she's on a diet already she's got not enough likes on her tumblr page and she's wanting an instagram and her parents won't let her but she's feeling left out socially if she doesn't have that and so i just feel like there's this massive pressure cooker that girls are growing up in that's faster and more intense and desensitizing girls to having a high sense of self-worth because they're they're being objectified more and more um, because of the porn industry by boys. So it's just, it's a really intense time. And yes, I've seen it get more intense. Um, and I think with social media, I'm sure you've talked about this with other experts, um, parents, God bless them, they're just trying to dodge bullets every day about the latest social media portal that their kid is interfacing with and how that's, you know, literally pruning the brain for these kids to have less ability to focus and um, be more flooded with stimulus visually and emotionally and that we're seeing kids in more crisis. 
So here I was helping to be proactive with life coaching, and I still feel we are being that way, but there's a snowball effect going on in the world of adolescent girls. And so we have to keep, as coaches, we have to keep ahead of what's the next trend, what's the next problem, what, where, where do we need to proact ahead of the game? And that's kind of where I focus, you know, where I take the training. These women that take the training, this is where I take our curriculum. I'm sure that you work with teenage girls uh, with eating disorders. Um, so my question is, um, do teenage girls with eating disorders do well with life coaching? Yes, yes, absolutely. What I, I work, I would say I work in collaboration with experts, you know, really well-trained psychiatrists, psychologists, and therapists who are an eating disorder outpatient, inpatient program, um, who really, you know, that's really their expertise. So what's really neat about life coaching and working in tandem with those professionals, let's say they have a young woman transitioning out of treatment, or I'm working with a young woman whose parents brought her to me and she's 15 years old and parents are noticing she's eating less and she's lost some weight, but they don't think she has an eating disorder, but she's been kind of sad and lost a boyfriend and they're not sure what to do. They might start with us as a life coach and we dig in there and we kind of find out, you know, this is a bigger problem than even your teenage daughter has let you on to believe, so then we would cross-refer. Um, we're very clear that we as life coaches are not clinicians, we're not trying to treat uh, eating disorders, but we do a beautiful job of, I'd say, once a young lady has been stabilized um, and helping them be, get out of that medical model and start to become who they desire to be with those tangible goals and accountability with having that life coach that helps them create a new identity that has nothing to do with, I'm an anorexic or I'm a bulimic or I'm a recovering anorexic. So that's where life coaching can be very much the the breath of fresh air after a treatment has been successful. Awesome. Do you work with the parents of the of teenage girls as well, and, and how do you enjoy working with them? Yeah, you know, I think for those of us that are really, you know, working with the youth market, we really are in, we need to be in partnership with parents. I really don't see it as an isolated relationship. You know, when I went into the field of wanting to help empower teenage girls after coming out of the gang you know, the game career, I didn't really think through that I was going to be working with parents that much. I was just so eager to work with girls and help them. That being said, the moms were generally the ones that would find me. They would hear me speak in a high school or they would read an article that I wrote that was published in the local paper or, or magazine. And I was starting to have these conversations with moms about their concerns about their daughters and also hearing about the communication battles that were taking place. So moms and daughters were super close there could be that area where, you know, there was there were problems in the communication or, you know, enmeshment in the relationship where the mom wanted to empower the daughter and the daughter didn't want to hear it from the mom. So I began to learn how important it was in our model as we coach young ladies, and I say we meaning the graduates who take my training, um, learn how to partner with parents so that we can align our goals because nobody knows their kid better than a parent. And if we as coaches think we're going to be able to you know, save the day or really help this youngster without really hearing from the parent, I think we're, we're missing the mark. So we do workshops for parents around communication. In our model where we train women to work with girls, we teach the, the women how to work with the parent, empower the parent, keep the parent in the loop around the coaching. Um, yeah, it's important. Parents need tools too. And we build that into our model. Yeah, got it. Got to do that. Got to partner with parents. Totally. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your work uh, in the media. Um, I see that you're an expert um, on Mary Kate Ashley Olson's website, and I actually told my wife that, and she said she those are her icons. So whatever that means. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you've spoken to over twenty thousand teens nationwide. So yeah, um, yeah. that's been great. Well, for that, thank you. Yeah, it's been a busy fifteen years. I got to tell you. I mean, between. Speaking in schools, and here's the bottom line, you know, like you, you're an entrepreneur, you've built your beautiful website, your blog, you're doing this service by providing these interviews to your audience, you know it's a constant build, you're constantly building and innovating, and so where the media piece came in is, it was truly accidental, I 
was one of those people. I was living in Los Angeles, which, of course, you know, is kind of the Hollywood capital of what's the latest and coolest trends. And so I was just blessed. I started speaking at some really higher end private schools in the Los Angeles area where, unbeknownst to me, there were some celebrity kids at those schools. So I met some cool people that were parents just, you know, just because they're celebrities didn't mean that, you know, they don't want the best for their kids. And they were there at some of these seminars. So little by little, I just started meeting some really interesting people and started doing some networking um, in Los Angeles in some cool circles. And I had an opportunity to, you know, get asked to submit some advice column work to the MaryKateNashley.com website. So that was a long time ago, but I was I was blessed to be able to, you know, offer a little bit of wisdom on their site to girls that would write in. Because Mary Kate and Ashley, they are icons. They are brilliant businesswomen. And many, many years ago, as they were building their site, the people that were, you know, really positioning and branding them knew that they were the front people for girls to come to their site. But they had enough integrity to say, we want to put people that really are trained experts in the area of counseling, coaching, girl empowerment to be giving advice to girls that might write in with more challenging, you know, home situations, life situations. So I was blessed to be there you know, kind of advice person for a period of time, which was really, really fun for me. Um, and then there's been some other really cool media, uh, you know, books and, and different, where I've been blessed to be, you know, to, quoted in different magazines and books and, you know, and TV shows and national talk shows, morning shows and things like that. But the bottom line is, whether you're a teenage girl with a dream or a mom of a teenage girl, because I want to give your audience, you know, support, specifically for them there's nothing that you can't do be or have if you have an idea or a vision it's just really about what i did is getting out there i i really just i never really stopped for the first five or six years well even now i'm a workhorse but you know i was always looking for places and people that i could tell what i was up to and that would champion the work and then say who do you know could i speak on such and such radio show or somebody available to interview me at a newspaper or you know, I was pretty proactive about the media piece after I got a taste of it. Initially, it was kind of an accident when just met cool people as I was speaking. But then once I got a taste of it, I really saw how much the media, including social media and doing webcasts and podcasts, the more that we do of this, the more we get a message to the market and let people know we're out there. For the teens, you're not alone. For parents raising teens, you got people like Alexis and you've got people like all the people he's interviewed that care about this market and raising young, empowered girls. So I think media and social media is a killer way to, you know, really be committed to getting your content out there and helping well, your market. Yeah, well said. Um, if of, of all, I mean, there's tons of students you work with, but any success stories that come to your mind for when you think of how coaching and mentoring a young uh, teenage girl can make a monumental positive change in her life? Oh, that's, there's so many. Thank you for the question. I, you know, my favorite part of the business is talking about the girls. You know, that's why it's called Teen Wisdom because, you know, as much as you know, getting out there and speaking and helping parents and building the training program has been wonderful. At the end of the day, what I call the heart of Teen Wisdom are the girls themselves. So, how, how do I pick a story? You know, there's been a lot of pivotal clients that have come through my doors, and I'll try to pick a case that is universal in nature, especially because there's so many young women today that feel, whether they're feeling bullied or socially isolated or just not connected to their peers. There's a young woman who was referred to me several years ago when she was um, in high school. She had transferred high schools after her sophomore year, so I met her um, right before her senior year. After her sophomore year, she transferred high school, thinking that was going to be the answer to some of her problems because she was a beautiful girl, very smart, but on an inner level was shaky. She just was not able to connect too socially. She was kind of an introvert, very smart girl, a very sweet girl, but just had had a lot of social rejection. So after she transferred high schools and went to a new school for her junior year, which would be, you know, about 16 years old in the States, um, her senior year was, a, was on approach, and she was pretty down and began to turn to boys for her sense of self and got pretty, you know, sexually active and 
had an incident with a boy that was pretty, it was pretty jarring for the parents to find out about because she was hiding it and going behind the parents' back and she was kind of up to some high-risk behavior. And the parents were, needless to say, pretty freaked out that their daughter was looking for love kind of in all the wrong places in, in their mind. So she came to me the summer before her senior year and we worked together between the summer before her senior year and right before she ended up leaving for college. And this was a young woman who went from being completely embarrassed that her parents knew the choices that she had made to feeling tons of shame about herself to feeling very socially isolated. Now she would be grounded so she couldn't see the guy anymore. She didn't have really any good friends. She was not having the high school career, so to speak, you know, that you see in movies that you want to have with a popular group of friends. And her grades and her academics were pretty much beginning to suffer, too, but that was the only thing that she really had left that she had any sort of pride in. And what we began to do was we began to help her learn the definition of self-love. And to begin to help her learn that because she was more of an introvert, there was nothing wrong with her, that she just really socially never really felt comfortable in large groups. So she had a difficult time in high school. And instead of kids having compassion and understanding, of course, she was branded as the quiet, weird girl, and then she was picked on and socially isolated, so she thought she transferred high school. That would solve her problems, and of course it didn't because she was still the same young woman with a little bit of social anxiety, high extra introversion, um, but, but more and more feeling depressed on an inner level that she wasn't connecting. So, of course, she would start these random conversations with different guys, and before you knew it, she was being more sexually promiscuous than even she wanted to be, and she had made some choices she was ashamed of. So by the time she got to me, things were pretty, in her mind, very stacked against her in, in terms of her level of feeling good about herself and her future. So the coaching was perfect, perfect, because... No, it wasn't necessarily proactive. It was after some of the, the challenges she had been having. Um, we really rebooted this young woman. And in doing the work, she was diligent. I had her do several different processes in our curriculum to help her really identify herself from the inside out and define herself from on her standards, do a lot of self-forgiveness, releasing the guys that used her, um, repairing her relationship with her parents, um, learning some social skills to be able to connect with peers that she did want to reach out to during her senior year. And I got to tell you, this is a girl who, by the end of her senior year, it was unbelievable. She made a group of very dear friends. She got a really great boyfriend. She applied to college and got into her number one school. I just got an email from her that she's going to be studying abroad next year as her junior year at college. And it's literally night and day in terms of I saw a girl who was so shut down and broken down to a young woman who before she left for college, um, we did her, you know, kind of final session. And she just walked out of my office with her shoulders back, her head held high. And it was it was a miracle. It was incredible um, to see the power of the relationship that you build with a, a minor who needed somebody to reflect her greatness and help her see herself in a way that she wasn't able to see and just validate her experience that there was nothing wrong with her and would give her tools to begin to set baby step goals to create her senior year in a way that she could leave the nest, leave her family, go off to college and live on her own and do good. She went to San Francisco and had an incredible freshman year, sophomore year. Now she's heading off to to overseas for her junior year and pursuing her dream as a designer. And it's just incredible. I mean, that we have so many stories like that, um, the coaches that work with us. So, yeah, that, that's what keeps me going back to innovating on behalf of girls and doing the work because you see that it works. It really, really works. Wow, what an amazing... So thank you for thank you, thank you you for letting me tell you that story. Amazing turnaround. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was awesome. Um, Thank you. What What do you love most about your work? Mm. Talking to you about it. No, I'm talking about <laughs> what I love most. Talking about it. Can you tell? Um, what I love most about my work is I love teenage girls. I know that might sound, you know, kind of crazy, but I love I love their creativity, their passion, their joy. I love their angst. I love sitting and talking with a teenage girl about her life and her dreams. 
And I even love the moments when I see, which I don't love because I hate to see girls in that, that tunnel where they feel alone or like life is really hard and nobody gets them and their parents don't get them. And I, I, I don't love seeing a girl in pain emotionally, but I even love that as a professional because I know there's a way out for them. I know that the, the, the place that they may be in in their life that feels overwhelmingly difficult having worked with thousands and thousands of teenage girls and never seeing a girl not come through the tunnel. We've never had, it, God forbid, a suicide or anything. You know, we've had girls get pretty low to come through our doors, but I see every teenage girl that goes through our doors rebound and come up and out of their pain or their problems and set their goals and dreams on fire eventually. So even when they're struggling, I know there's a rainbow at the end. I know that their life is going to be okay. So I love the prospect of sitting with a young lady and whether she's struggling or she's not, I love the process of helping her move forward. And that's what I love the most. And now I really love, so that's at the heart of it. It's always been about the teenage girls. And now in the last five or six years, creating the training program, I am loving talking to women who say, oh my gosh, Tammy, how did you build a private practice and speak to so many youth and I want to do what you do. How can I do it? So what I've loved in the last several years is being able to, you know, kind of pollinate the market with more empowerment life coaches that are really, really skilled and trained, conscious, purposeful women that say, this is my journey. And I don't know how to do it, but I know you do. So I want to study with you and get your curriculum and learn how to do this and help girls in my own community and in my own, you know, sphere of influence. And if they want to be paid for it, we teach them how to build it as a business. So that's been really cool is seeing stay-at-home moms or therapists that want to learn the skill set of life coaching call me and say, I want to do what you're doing. And I'm like, yay, join our tribe. So that's been, I, I needed that because that was a resurgence in my own passion for the work uh, was being able to, you know, leverage it by helping other women. You know, what struck me from what you, what you described is your, your love of work with, with teenage girls is, is you said, you, you know, you, you embrace what they're going through and what mm-hmm. and and it occurred to me that like there's a lot of people that I know who dread when when their daughters become teenagers so would you have a message to those to the to the to the moms who you know have like you know every, you know like every you know everyone else is thinking you know those teenage years are gonna just you know be a pain in my ass mm-hmm. but what what can we say to them? What's a good message to them so that they can kind of think along your thoughts that there is some, a rainbow at the end and you should embrace the process and it's not a bad time to be. A, mm-hmm. You know, I got the chills when you asked that. I'm not kidding. Both my arms, Alexis, have the chills. And <laughs> because that's such a great question. It really is because it gets to the heart of um, the matter, which is you only have your kids you know, living supposedly in your home. Of course, now with the millennial generation, a lot of these kids are moving back home after college, but really this time in life, you know, zero to 18, you know, when they're first born, it's a chapter in the journey of you being a parent to this young life. And it's a chapter that's actually filled with, yes, it's filled with angst, and yes, it's filled with pushback and difficulty with limit setting, you know, it's a, not an easy time but for most adolescents and parents. But I will say this, if your teenager is kind of pushing back and shutting down or withdrawing and you're concerned about that, get support. Don't do the teenage years alone. And that's one of the pieces that I think is really important. So parents kind of feel as, you know, you're raising your kids when they're little and you're sitting at a park with your little ones, parents are talking about everything. Oh, when did your daughter first do this? When did your son first do this? Mm-hmm. Oh, my daughter's in it. But as the teenage years happen, we see less and less parental connection and community and sharing about what's going on in their home with attitude or with a teenager who won't talk to them or a teenager that's not motivated to do well academically or a teenager who they're worried about is overachieving and doesn't have balance or whatever the scenario is, there are other parents going through it too. And one of the things I used to do um, when I did a lot of speaking with, with parents primarily was getting them talking about what are the challenges of raising your adolescent. 
and really open up that dialogue. And it was so amazing and comforting for parents to be like, oh my God, I just got the eye roll this morning. I just got the hand on the hip too. And my kid just told me she hated me yesterday. And it, I want parents to know that this is a precious time, though it can be full of prickly energy and a lot of challenge. It's still a precious time because there's a lot of richness in it too. Because you know what? Going back to why I named my company Teen Wisdom, if you can find those moments with your teenager where his or her guard is down, usually it's when they're tired, it's late at night, you can have some really rich conversations. And what I would say to parents is do a lot of listening and less talking at or preaching, teaching, managing. Try to ask open-ended questions that really get your teenager to talk. And when he or she does, don't have a lot to say back except, hmm, wow, interesting, tell me more, I didn't know that. We have to really be open. When we're open, granted I know we have to parent them, we have to hold them accountable, but we really, the way to get through the teenagers and have them be rich is one, be supported, two, be in community with other parents, and three, listen and ask questions. Find those times, whether it's in the car when you're driving with them, Find times when you can create connection, and you're going to have some laughs with your teenagers. Teenagers can be a lot of fun. It's not all bad news, but we've got to learn how to empty out and open up to teenagers and not constantly be nagging them, be on them, be reminding them. They're going to forget stuff. They're going to be absent-minded. They're going to drive you a little crazy. That's what they're supposed to be doing at this age, especially in the middle school years. So I just say lighten up around the whole thing and just know there are great resources. You are a great resource. Your authors and speakers you interview are great resources. Nobody has to do the adolescent piece alone. People don't do it alone during Lamaze class. They don't do it alone during the mommy and me phase of toddlerhood. Why are parents doing this alone in adolescent years? There's no need for that. So those are just some little pearls of wisdom I would give to parents raising teens. What about one pearl of wisdom for teens listening to us Uh, today um, before they cross that bridge to young adulthood? Well, your listeners are boys and girls. Teens. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I would say oh, mostly I mom. Love, I would say mostly parents. Mostly but but mostly um, parents. but 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 if they can drag along their teen to listen to to us today, that yeah, get your teen to listen to this interview, please, 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 please. <laughs> um, you know, I would say a pearl of wisdom for a teenager that you know, parents, if you want to use this one and kind of drop it in on them, is is to say that I know it's it's a it's kind of strange, but Teenagers need to know that someone cares. Um, they really need to know that, they, that they're not too late. It's, if they haven't missed anything. There's nothing to rush and get to. You know, I, I, it's not really one pearl. It's sort of two in one, meaning that, you know, we can have a pearl of wisdom of like, you can be, do, and have anything you want to be in life. You know what? That's not the pearl of wisdom I would put out there at this point in the lives of adolescents because... Most of our adolescents are feeling pressured. Even our boys, you know, our boys are feeling really the masks that boys have to wear and how they keep everything inside and they have to be this tough guy or this jock or this womanizer. It's it's very hard to be an adolescent today. So what I would say is give the pearl of wisdom I would say to any teenager listening is your feelings matter. Someone cares. If you don't feel like your family of origin cares, or your friends don't care, find someone who does. You're not alone. There are people that get it, whether it's a counselor at your school or a coach or a life coach or Alexis Avila or teenwisdom.com. Um, don't be alone with your struggles. Reach out, get support. It's not weak. Um, and know that you're not alone. There are people that care. I think that's the most important piece because then when you feel supported, going back to kind of why I started Teen Wisdom in the first place was because I came out of the inner city and I saw a need for a proactive person in the marketplace. But at the end of the day, why I really got involved in working with teens has to do a lot with my own adolescence. And I really didn't didn't feel like people cared. And it wasn't until I found a mentor that really did care about my journey did I then believe I could have my goals and dreams that I I have wanted. So I really think that's the first step is find someone who really cares and open up to that person and talk with them about 
your your struggles and your, your your dreams. Like, and if you don't have dreams and you don't know what they are, find somebody that'll help you figure that out. Be proactive on behalf of your own life. Don't sit back and feel alone or victimized. That's really the pearl I would give because right now we have more teenagers feeling pressured and alone than ever before. So I think that's what my pearl would be. Fantastic. How can we get in touch with you, uh, work with you, and, and, and Teen Wisdom? Well, thank you. Yeah, on that note of reaching out, um, teenwisdom.com is my website. Um, you can send an email to info, that's I-N-F-O, info at teenwisdom.com. Um, if you are looking for life coaching for your teenage daughter, we have life coaches really all over the United States, not in every state, in every county, like my goal, but right now we do have a group of foot soldiers around the United States and in other places. So if you're looking for a teenage girl to have a life coach, send us an email to info at teenwisdom.com. If you're in the Los Angeles or San Diego area, you can personally work with me. I do life coaching for teen girls and parent coaching as well. Again, send that email to info at teenwisdom.com. Last but not least for women who say, gosh, I love what Andy's up to and I want to be part of the community of teen wisdom coaches. We certainly are a tribe and we are a family of connected women empowering girls. We have a program starting August 26th. It's a four-month certification training program. It's done over the phone and over the web, so we can work with women all over the world who want to help girls. So if you'd like to be considered to be in, uh, in our program, we are enrolling now, and we limit the program to 25 women. So get your application in. Go to teenwisdom.com forward slash coaching, or I think it's teenwisdom.com forward slash teen dash coaching. Bottom line, it's all on the teenwisdom.com website. We have applications, um, prerequisites you get to do. It's just so much fun to learn about the world of teens and to do it with a community of women who are really, really fired up about this cause. So I can't thank you enough for this platform and what you've been building and for the opportunity to talk about raising our girls to be that confident, conscious, empowered young woman we want her to be. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Tammy, I appreciate your time, and uh, hopefully we can get you back on the show. But thanks for coming on the Prepped and Pause podcast. appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you for what you're doing out in the world. You're awesome. Thanks, Alexis. Bye, everyone. And this wraps up our show today with Tammy Walsh of Teen Wisdom, Inc. Go to www.teenwisdom.com to learn about Tammy's amazing work empowering teenage girls. And make sure to be on the lookout for our next podcast episode. It's going to be number 81. It'll be our next tutoring tips episode. Thank you for joining us on the Prepped and Polished podcast. Now go out there and take control of your education. Thank you.